accents. I don't know many uh, actors who like accents as much as you and I do. And I see you fly into these accents. What is that? But I do accents with you and I do accents with Cedric. My family hates me doing an accent. Really? Yeah. And they may hate it for the absolute true reason is I disappear into an accent to try and not being myself. It's, a it's like a mask, it's something where, where to hide. Try to leave the room. Yeah. Now, I don't think I have any facility for accents, but I have learned Your that... Your Scottish accent. Well, that's just when, the, you get, when you find out where to place it, and that's only that accent and that character. Right. So accent isn't a kind of, in, isn't, isn't a, what is the word I want? It isn't some sort of, it's like, you know, it isn't like makeup. Like, when you go lots of times, well, we just want a little bit of it, you know, just a little bit of the Scotch accent, you go, what the f*** is that? A little bit of the Scotch accent. We're talking about the way a person talks. And what about all the English accents you use in Billy Bishop? Well, again, they aren't, they aren't a very wide range. And when you're only doing it for a word or two, that's one thing. And a lot of them are caricatures. These are little cartoon drawings. And when you're, and it, people mistake you for, again, in their imagination, they're adding all this, that there's all these characters playing. It's just, you're just doing this line, and then this line, and then this line, like, you know, it's like just one long monologue. And you're not playing the reaction of these characters, particularly until you want to play it. You know, it's, it's just, it's a kind of sleight of hand. And that kind of transformation is highly theatrical. That is because the audience makes up, as they, they do, they make up the whole First World War. I mean, it's theater. And do you do an American accent when you audition for American TV movies? I, I'm supposed to, <laughs> but I never get that because, like, for Glenn Glary and Glenn Ross, we did the the Chicago accent, right? But we, you get coached in it, and and that's what was news to me. I thought that it was like an instinct, like being able to sing on tune. Or when I first did Billy Bishop, I watched old British movies. That's why. Was, but no, Brits don't even talk like that anymore, like they did in the fifties in the movies, right? So, but when you ask, actually have somebody who knows, like a coach, then you there's like it, you can um, um, what is it? I was going to say decompose, deconstruct, yeah. not decompose, yeah. Yeah. deconstruct it. Like and basically, it's finding where people in that sense as a culture where it's placed. And then, then how these words come out seems to take care of itself to a certain extent. And I found that I could only do for those lines. Again, it's like partly learning the lines. I, don't, I had a Chicago accent doing that play. But to do a Chicago accent, or I was going to Chicago, I fall apart immediately if I tried to just be in a Chicago accent. I know how to do it. And then you, you, know, they, you, you go through the accent and this word is wrong, this word is wrong, and you narrow those down until they're less and less, and you have to concentrate on them, and they're, it, the accent as well takes you off what you're trying to do, because it's this technical thing that you have to master mm -hmm. in order to get to transcend it. Like you say, it's the world that you've got to know in order to play in it. Yeah, and it takes time to learn that stuff. I saw, we saw the House of Cards last night, but the original version with Sir Ian Richardson uh, set in England, da 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 da, and they have the part of the, of the, of the uh, newspaper is in fact is American, except this is played by a very large British actor putting on an American accent. So it was interesting to watch this very large English actor trying to be a very blustery, full blown American capitalist, so to speak. And he was great being American as long as he was talking, but as soon as he stopped talking, he couldn't be American. He ended up being inutterably British. So I thought, well, the sounds kind of got to have this actor's mouth. At least gives him a, hang, a handle to hang on to to try to be American. That's very interesting. But we didn't have sounds to hang on to. He sort of, he just looked totally British. It's a very interesting point. Yeah. No, I think it's, I think that for me, an accent was always specifically a character. And I mean, that, right. you know, it's like, it's not a generic way people talk, though an accent is. I mean, you can tell you know, we're, this person from Australia by, the, by, the, by their accent, except there are a certain person from Australia which places their voice in a certain place and says words in a certain way. And on the bottom of your resume, do you have special skills and do you list the accents? I don't think I have a resume anymore. You don't have a resume? How do you get work? I don't. <laughs> but even if I had a resume, I don't think I would. Special skills, horseback riding, fencing, 
I mean, it is a bit left over from the 1930s and the 1890s. At the bottom of our resume, we put, I can fence, I can ride a horse, I can do a Suffolk accent, a Norfolk accent, a Northumberland accent, and a Scottish accent. It's a bit 19th century. But there you go. Yeah, but I mean, still, you get asked, you know, uh, you know, come and, you know, come and bring your Scottish accent as if it's like, it's like a suit, you know. Can you, can you have your own car? <laughs> you know, and you want to go, well, I can do a Scottish accent, but you have to pay me to get it up. That's part of rehearsing the part, for Christ's sake. What do you mean? Do you know the lines to this part? You can have it or something. You know, it's, again, I go back to process. Eric, a pleasure. Thank you. Christ. <laughs> Interrogation. I don't know the CIA could use you.